audio issue. Hopefully we've got it figured out now. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a switch up here, and I'm going to be the one to stream the game, so I'll be more of the color caster. Uh, for this particular game, we'll, Jared will be doing more of the play-by-play. -play. And uh, we'll see how that goes, as usually our roles are reversed. Yeah, and it's a little interesting, but, you know, my computer just wants to hate me today. But, you know, it should be good now. If not, I might cry. Well, without further ado, we, we've seen the map pool all week for the other three games, starting out on Lijiang, then moving to Havana, Blizzard World, Coliseo, and Busan. Have yet to get to, Bus to Busan yet. We have seen one one match go to to Coliseo. We haven't really... Most maps or most matches have been a, you know, a 3-0 um, one way or the other. So I'm really hoping we we really do get that first kind of giga banger of the the season here that goes the full five five maps. Oh, and if any map do, if any match does, it's going to be this game. I mean, both teams kind of specialize and have their own different unique play style for each map. Like map one, we're expecting Caden to go far a junk. Map two, I mean, I think Effect should have that in the bag. Like he's been a pretty good hit scan player up to now. Don't know why that would change. Blizzard World should be pretty even. Call SEO. Really you never just know. depends on what you run or run. It's a push map. You know, we've seen, I've seen the better team lose a lot of times on push. I've also seen crazy comes backs from 123 meters down all the way to, to, to finishing. You know, the push is a very interesting game mode where there's fighting almost the entire time you're on the map. There's very few moments where there's no team fights going on. So it'll be interesting to see because. Again, we don't have a lot of practice with this new game mode. I mean, sure, the game has been out for three months, but it's I don't know how much these teams have scrimmed these types of maps because, you know, how often have we gotten to them? Like I've said, this is only this... We've only seen two push maps this entire season throughout our, what, eight games? Something like that. So the teams for this week are Revenge of Eggnog... This team will be filling the first slot this week. We have Tonk on tank, Melly and Caden on DPS, and the Grumpy Kitten FBOTS support line. It's exact, should be exactly the same as we saw last week, and we really saw Melly have a huge impact in their game last week. Oh yeah, Melly should definitely just be their ace in their, uh, ace in their sleeve. Excluding Lee Jang Tower, we're just expecting Melly to kind of take over, because Lee Jang is going to be Caden's playground. He kind of just loves this map right and i mean we kaden is known to be kind of a farah junk player i hate to use the term but silly heroes um and we, we both of those picks are extremely it can be extremely oppressive on different sub maps of the Li Jiang, uh map we have seen evan pick up a mercy so i wouldn't be surprised if we see some farah mercy coming out of revenge of eggnog yeah, no doubt about it. And team two this week is going to be Catboys. We have Pi on tank, Effectist, and East Beast on the D filling out the DPS role, and Nelmos and Deathmatcher in the support category. We saw this yeah, team... Yeah, and... I'll go ahead. We're really looking out for Nelmos this week. Nelmos kind of just kept Pi alive. The amount of healing this man put into Pi is just incredible. He's just such a mechanical god, and he hits every sleep, he hits every ante, and you're just kind of looking for him to take over the lobby today. Uh, to quote Pi, I believe his exact quote was, I feel like I just got an allergy test with how many shots I just got. Uh, replying to how many uh, darts Net Nel Nelmos hit on him uh, playing the Ana last week. So I think you know that really gives you an idea of the consistency that Nelmos has and his, his really ability to keep Pi alive. No doubt about it. Well, do you have any other thing, any other thoughts before we hop into this match here, Jared? Uh, as long as Pi can hold his own, I don't see this going any way but the Gap Boys. So we will see a night market here. Oh, I say night market. It's no longer nighttime, but it's still classified as night market for the first sub map here of Li Zhang. 
Um, you know, we see we see a lot of sim rush comps on this map. We've also seen some really prevalent Fara gameplay uh, coming on this side as well. Yeah, I mean, this map is not like the best for Fara because there's just a lot of high ground that his gans can play off of, but it's still very oppressive. I did mention the Fara, and we do see the the Far Mercy come out on the side of um, Eggnog here, with the ball comp, with a ball and a Lucio. It'll be interesting to see how the Lucio plays into this, because I'm not really really sure how much it synergizes with the rest. We do see a very traditional brawl coming out from the side of Catboys, Ryan, Sim, Cass, uh, Kariko, and Mercy. Yeah, and right away they switch off the uh, off to Sojourn and uh, Kiriko. I will say right away the far does not have a pocket. Okay. Evan just got scooched back up there. But with Catboys taking early control of points, it's going to be kind of hard for that ball to get pro uh, a lot of use. Unless they just start picking everything. You know, that that would also do it. Yeah, and right away, just, you know, Catboys kind of fell apart there. They did get two picks, one gets res, but... Yeah, I mean... They might need a change. As a tank player, I can attest, playing right into the ball is not the most fun situation. No, we're looking for to Pi to kind of go Sigur, but... Kaden, uh, Easton already used his fade. They blow up Melly. And we're seeing kind of this little skirmish go on where Nelmos is just jumping into the back line. Easton was occupying the high ground. Gets picked by Melly. Melly's going to... Uh, Evot's going to res uh, Kitabates. I mean, we do see that the Catboys are able to flip the point. So, you know, did, did stop some of that accretion or, you know, tick percentage of the capture percentage, but are they going to be able to hold it? We see the Reinhardt get isolated, picked. Solo Noon onto the ball from Aphexis here. I like it. it. It does relieve a lot of the pressure that the ball puts on you. Tanks are traded, and now it'll be... Uh, to see how it goes. They're just getting closed in on though. Kaden with two this fight should be should be enough to capture the point, but we do see the Kasune rush on the side of Catboys investing. Even if it's just to get a few more tick percentage, it should be enough. Yeah, yeah they're just kind of staggering their way in here. I, I Why does it shatter get to shatter? Because they cleansed. Oh, but a massive death blossom coming in on, on the side of East Beast there. Finding two, and that should be enough to maintain this point and keep accruing more percentage. Yeah, it was just overall, I mean, they use just about everything in the book. only thing coming up is uh, Window and Mines, but besides that, it was a pretty clean fight. Now most of was getting hit off the edge. He's going to use his TP there, but should have it back soon enough. Minefield coming in early on the fight. Pi's just kind of caught in the middle of it. Can't do a lot. Does he get the mercy? He doesn't quite get the mercy, but we do see that... Renger Eggnog has already got three picks this fight. Make it four, and that should be the cap. This is just a pretty clean cleanup from the side of Eggnog. I mean... They just utilized the minefield, kind of played around it. Pi wasn't able to do a lot. He was caught in that corner, and they just played off of that. We do see the far without the pocket, choosing more to pocket the sojourn. I mean, Millie's been the big egg back player, but saying that, he just kind of throws himself into the fire. Pi's trying to deny the res. They get the sleep on the Easton, but 
Pie's already in there. And he's actually playing quite slow, which I don't think I favor. The barrage comes out, but, but it affects us, shuts it down, gets the sticky onto the Sojourn, but the Sojourn gets nailed, rolls into the mines. Effects rolls into the mines. And that's just that's just not a good time. I mean, an extremely close first sub map, but I don't think Easton gets back in time. No, I don't think they they think they're able to touch. That was a, a very close map. Yeah, that's kind of what we expected to see from these teams. This is this is definitely true. You know, you you expect to see a lot of that coming out. We'll see if we have, there's any compositional switches um, for the teams here. I would like to see Pi maybe get off the Rhine and switch more, like you said, over to that Sigma. I think would be would be a good a good switch for him. We know it's in his wheelhouse, and we know he can play it, and it might provide a little bit more into this. Or the Orisa. The Orisa is also a good pick here, and I do like the the Zen coming out. You know, put that Discord on, and Discord does thirty percent more damage. It's a very hard it's a very good ability in the game yeah it really helps a lot with just tanking tanks and i mean you're gonna see them rotate through white right away expecting Caden to be on Farah, but i still don't hate that position for Caden. i mean he's just able to shoot in and i mean not when he gets picked out of the sky by effects but you know tonk not able to find that pick on the uh, deathmatch here, but I mean early it's on, it's pretty I, close. I like this compositional switch coming in on the side of Cat Boys. The Discord really putting a lot of pressure on Tonk. And Effectus has done a good job to get Farah off of the the or Caden off of the Farah. My bad. Yeah, and I mean, looking at it compositionally, I mean, they are running a pretty weird ball comp, but. I also don't hate it. I mean, the we brick see, packs given 25% uh, or 25 HP right off the bat now is just kind of massive for them. Right. I mean, we didn't really talk about it throughout the week, but yeah, the brick got a pretty substantial buff to uh, to her kit, and it, we've definitely seen it, you know, playing ranked and stuff. I, I've seen a Honk lot Honk on the Ryan. Ranks. I don't know if I like the Ryan here. I, I feel like it's still going to... Like, he did get the buffs. You know, he got the fire strike damage back up to 100. He got the, the pin damage back. Not with back. that support line, though. But, yeah, I, I don't know how well I like it with the Briggs, Brig Mercy. I also don't like the fact they're going to try and take this fight over the bridge. I mean, effects can just pop noon and stop their push at any time. We see an early pick. Pie off the edge. Yeah, tried to go for the Orisa strat. Doesn't get anything, but... Two picks from Melly, three picks. Effectus finds two, but I think it's just Kata Bates and Melly left. Oh, no! Most can clutch this though. It's just two on point. I mean, if they can get back fast, Pi matching the Ryan, which is also kind of weird. I like the horse, but you know, suicide horse off the edge. I mean, I mean we had to I, have some reason. I th we all th we all know. The, Pi, the reason Pi did that. We all know Pi at heart is a, is a Ryan player, and we saw it play last last map. Does it get the pin onto the Reaper? Aphexus finds Melly, and the Ryan doesn't get Pi. just a pin machine. Aggressive. You know, I really like to see one of these Ryans pin someone off the edge, you know? Instead of just, like, pin them into a wall, there's that beautiful, beautiful fish gap. Uh, I mean, to quote Jared yesterday as we were playing, pin them if you can pin them and don't cancel. Yeah, but that was on a map without a ledge. This map has a beautiful ledge, and Pi's getting caught out. He's going to get trans. That's such a big trans from the side of the Catboys. Tonk gets over aggressive, misses all the pin targets there, and kind and gets punished. Kaden tried to clean up. Easton's gonna push in here and blossom. Does get shut down immediately by Melly, oh, but, the, but the pin onto the Ana and the fire strike. Safe to say, Pod is not like Grumpy Kitten. And 
I mean, we saw the compositional switches, and with the Discord, the Revenge of Eggnog looked a little uncomfortable when they weren't on that ball comp. Going into, they just don't have an answer for it. I mean, going into this last map, it's the most brawl-oriented uh, map of of the or the sub map of the three maps, right? We've we've seen a lot of Ryan on Control Center historically throughout Overwatch's history, in all and all all facets. So, I, I I tend to think the sub map will favor Cat Boys. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, like the comp they're running, it's just such a death ball. Now, saying that, Caden's on Junkrat. But yeah. he doesn't have a lot of heals on his side. They have Evan on Mercy still. Grumpy Kitten's switching back to the Kirika right away. Yeah, I mean, we just saw the early amp of speed out of spawn. A common strat used by Lucio's. Maybe just to try to get a little bit of advantage here, but I don't know how much it really paid off. Pi gets the pin early. Doesn't cancel, because he knows not to, but, you know. The they did find the sleep onto the cast. Aren't able to capitalize on it. Big nade the coming got caught on the side of Nelmos. Pi pins in deeper. N Melly what with, is he cooking? Melly with two. And I don't... Is that going to be... The, should be the fight win for Catboys here. We, we just see the Ryan swinging at each other. Tonk almost I don't know who wins this. Off Pi pins him off the edge. Pi gets the edge pin. And, 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 and that's why we call Pi... The Rhine player. That's why we call him Sir Pins a lot. This is true. I, I think that is an apt name, and I that pin might have been enough to to flip the favor back to uh to Cat Boys. Nobody nah, got talks on his way back. They do got, Nano Pie here though. Nobody got the Cap Pie gets the Nano gets two. Oh my! What oh, a big sh shatter! Solo shatters the Rhine and pins him to the back line. And we're seeing the first point control about you know two minutes in. Right, I mean, we saw multiple ults used on the side of Cat Boys to get the first cap capture percentage. We see we Pi shattered 30% back already, and Nelmos is 25% back to the Nano. But we do see, what is that, f almost f a full five ults on the side of... Uh, Pi! Doesn't quite get the pin cancel, but a nice pick onto the Ryan. I like it either way. I mean, they kind of just have the control. Afexus, they can just play down this long tunnel. I mean, Afexus pops the overclock there and gets two. Really neg negating the Kitsune rush that came out from Eggnog. Does get a little aggressive chasing the cast there and gets punished, but they might be able to res that. Yeah, they're gonna. Pi eats the pin like a champ. Cancels pins, the f Pins out of <laughs> Shatter. Right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Caden does find one with the tire. Tonk is eventually able to kill Pi, and that's two picks. Is it enough to flip the point? A big anti, though, on the side of Catboys. Maybe just give him enough time to retreat and reset without feeding over more ult charge. Nelmos does. I mean, they're going to lose the fight. Uh, late staggers coming in on the side of Catboys there. Caden finding two after the point's already been flipped, and that should be a little bit more percentage. Coming on, on the side of Catboys, or on the side of Eggnog, my bad. I mean, they they lost the fight, but we're still living in Pi's world. Like, they can't, they don't have an answer for him. And you can't have an answer for Pi, because Pi doesn't play like a logical Overwatch player. He just kind of does what he does. I mean, for the most part, this will be a, a, a dry fight, you know. But a big shatter on the side of Pi and a sleep on Takeda, Caden Bates. Does get picked. Pi's going to get pinned here. They do have Nano. They get the nano off. Does the Sojourn get out? No, they don't. I think we know Pi's Valentine. It might be Nelmos. If I if I was a bet man, my money would be on Nelmos. Yeah. Yeah, Pi just gets caught out there. Pi just doing Pi, but... Looking for a big overclock from effects. Oh, Melly with a nice shot onto FX to cancel the overclock. Easton trying to clean up. They do have... they. It's about equal. Oh, they don't want to lose. Okay. Tire doesn't find anything. But that's a, a I, big... It's Pilo, ult. though. It, it gets a, a big ult investment from both sides. But we do see that 
Ignog does get the flip and has two more team fights here. Yeah, and Pyrody is Shatter again. Oh, Kata Bates with the early two picks. Pi did shatter the fight. I don't know. I don't know if I saw it catch anybody, but do they get out and one more team fight. This is the last team fight. Nelmo staggering maybe a little bit here. Not not necessarily the best. That's not ideal. Ninety-one percent and counting. We do see Pi switch over to the Arisa, but I don't know if anybody can touch. They don't touch. I, we say that, but I see Effexus in the back. He didn't get on point. He, he they, they see nine. They they Charlie nine. They they had an opportunity to touch there, and they just they didn't. Looking but, like the oracles on Colosseo. I mean, but that that's a you know, that was a great first map, and we. Saw it come down to the last team fight. Oh, the double pin kill? Wow. You hate to see it. You do. But um we'll be uh we'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah, so overall you did fine. No, I just you just I know what you like to do. You like to over explain when you're trying to explain stuff. Don't do that. And besides that, you should be fine. I'm gonna try and stop cutting you off as much, but And we are back. Yep, Kappa is up 1-0 in the series. Looking, uh, no, Revenge of Eggnog is up 1-0 in the series, back. aren't they? Right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I need to yep, switch Kappa the sides up again. up 1-0 in the series. Looking, uh, no, Revenge of Eggnog we is up 1-0 in the series, back. aren't they? Uh, so just common Jaredel, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I need to yep. switch Kappa the sides up again. 1-0 in the series. Looking, uh, no. Red but besides that, uh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 common Jared L, right? 
Yeah, Got both yeah. on the attack first. Lost a very close round. But, you know, they should have this. I have faith in effects, but... Melly's looking like a pretty competent player. Kanan on the tour, you never know what you're going to see. Right, and I mean, it's been a long time since this map has been to the map. Well, it's the first season that it's been introduced into Overwatch 2 here. And it's always been a, like a long-range hitscan stream. A lot of Widow, a lot of Ash played on this map, especially this first point here. You know, you can play on this back high ground and have great line of sight all the way to the attacker's spawn. But we do see the Cat Boys come out on the traditional rush comp. Be interesting to see how that really works. Yeah, I kind of figured Pi would come out in Sigma, but, you know, it is what it is. I also figured Tonk would play ball. You know, maybe they were expecting the Zenyatta. They they struggled playing uh, that ball into the Zenyatta. So maybe they're thinking thinking the Ramatra is just overall a safer pick. Yeah, possibly. I mean, tries tr Pi is trying to force him into the hall, uh, doorway right there. Neither Widow finding much, but, you know, maybe that'll change soon. Easton's actually pushing Melly on the high ground. Pi getting anti, no cleanse. We do, I mean, Melly with two of this fight, that should be a, a you know, a, a nice place to stabilize in term, for Eggnog here. Melly no, with three, third. and Deathmatcher just doesn't quite get out. Pi switching over to the horse. I like I like the 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 Orisa switch here. I think it, it'll provide a little bit more poke into their team and maybe not get bullied as much by the Ramatra. No, and that's always a hope. But I mean, Melly's got the angles. Vex gets the opening shot, forces Melly back for a bit. And now they're just kind of taking a fight in this room. They nano tonk, and he just blows up high. There's nothing you can do about that. You're, you're darn, you're, yeah, you're right. But I mean, we do see Deathmatchers trade back to Torbjorn, so not an entire, not, not the worst thing that comes up to a fruition there. No, and Eggnog's looking very strong on this map. We do see the Molten Core come out, maybe trying to isolate the Orisa a little bit, and it looks like it did a pretty good job. Horse does get antied. But she does find the, the Widow. Easton picks up bot. Another nice anti coming in from Grumpy Kitten. And that's, that's just another pretty clean fight win from the side of Ignog. I mean, something has to change up here for the Catboys. They only have a minute left. They, I mean, there was a few ults invested, but they, Ignog still has quite a few. But they're going to have Ramatra time. They're going to have Nano this fight. But an early pick onto Melly. A good beat coming from Deathmatcher to try to mitigate some of the value that Annihilation would have gotten there. Or as Jared would call it, Ramatra time. Yeah. They do get antied, which is kind of big, but they get the pick on Pi. We they do get see, Deathmatcher. We do see East End with a pick on the Melly, but is it enough? Nelmos finds another. Is there any any more touchers, or do they... I don't think they touch. Got a really strong first point hold from the side of Eggnog here. I'd still really like to see Pygo Sig here. I mean, they, they've just been kind of ran over up till now. And... If they can just kind of match the bunkery comp that they're 
that the opposition is throwing at them. And you just kind of sit back and I mean, we get saw... picks with the uh, Widow. Yeah, I mean, we saw where that cart ended, and it's right around the first corner here. There's, you know, I, I don't know what their decision is. I We do see Catboys really, you know, excel on the uh, brawl comp, so I wouldn't hate to see them, you know, get the brawl in and try to s spawn hold them as, as close as possible. The only problem with that is if you lose that first fight, you at most get one fight. I, I, I mean, yeah. you are, tr it is true, but I mean, that's what with, we saw the but, most success on. Melly looks so hot right now. So I, do you I, really want to try and spawn camp that widow? It might be the best way to shut her down, give her the least amount of angles throughout, you know. They're going to have to do something. This is, this Something's is, better than nothing. This is for sure. I mean, this is still definitely winnable. I don't count Catboys out here. It can definitely still go their way. Oh, yeah. Nomos is on the Moira, which is and, an and interesting it, pick. But. Yeah, I would have liked to see the Ana maybe here, because I just don't think Moira might have the sustain that they're looking for. No, but maybe they're looking for the quick coalescence. Maybe. Uh, that is definitely a possibility. And they get Easton. They couldn't quite cleanse it. Fex finds Caden. Caden gets rezzed. That's a good res on the from Evbot there. Millie with another. Yeast Beast does come back on the Tracer and get to Ana, but I don't know if it's enough. That might just be the map. Effects nowhere in sight. He's not going to make it. And I think they, they roll it in. And that was just an extremely dominant round from Eggnog. I, I mean, uh, this is true. You know, like we... Like we had mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Nelly has been or Melly has been putting some some work in on the long range hit scans, and we I we figured this might that might favor Eggnog uh, a little bit, but I didn't think it would be this this bad. So, you know, R Renja Eggnog takes a two zero lead here, but you know, Catboys can always make a comeback. You never, you never count them out. So they're gonna have to. This, yeah, they, they for sure are. But hopefully they do, because I would love to see a great series moving forward here. But uh, we will be right back.
And we are back. Sorry for the little bit of a break, uh, but, you know, sometimes that just happens. Yeah, and going into this map, hoping to see something different coming out from Catboys. Because as it's been going, it's not been going strong. God. They need something to jolt them. They need to get back into this. I mean, I, as of now, they're out of it. I mean, they 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 had a strong comp that rush style they played like on maps two and three of Li Zhang looked really really good. And as they've switched off of that, it's it's been a little little wishy washy in my opinion. They're gonna try the Ryan rush again. I don't hate it, but I almost feel like, because what they went originally was, uh, was it Zen Kiriko? They... I feel like that would be better for them. I mean, I like the Lucio to try to mitigate some of the, or negate some of the long distances that they'll have to cover. And tr hopefully they utilize the speed. Um... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully they utilize the speed, but I mean... It's very easy to get lost in the sauce on this map. I mean, you can kind of you can pu push up to the high ground. Defenders can just drop. You can go around the sides. Defenders just walk away. I mean, there's a lot of ground to cover here. You, you're absolutely correct, and I I like, like this pocket ash. Maybe you find on a little bit more consistent value than the the widow. Yeah, and they're already going to pick on a deathmatch here. They lose their speed, but they're going to continue with it anyways. Would you see Grumpy Kitten trying to, to spawn camp the Lucio again? Melly gets Nelmos. That that's a, another good pick in Sagger. Melly with two. We really see that pocket ash getting a lot of value. Sixty percent to Bob already is is a lot. That's just incredible. Pie's trying to show a little aggression, but doesn't make anything of it. And they're they've just sat on this high ground for the past minute and a half. You know, not they've they've gained a little bit of space, but now they finally have their full team here, so now they can start to push. They still haven't gotten to the president, though. Mr. Pocket Ash is just sitting over in the corner. Oh, good, some really good use of the uh, punchy form there. I don't I don't know the technical name, but punchy form is good enough to get to you know not. Go around the shield and punish the people that are stacked in that room by Tonk there. I mean, this is just kind of brutal for them. That's a good they have to blow him up, but he has matcher. a double support pocket. The shatter. Oh, that that was a that was a good kind of bait and switch there on the side of Catboys, but I don't know if they find the value that they were looking for. No, they really don't. Which kind of sucks for them, because that was kind of going to be their big hurrah moment. I mean, they invested three ults into that. Oh, never mind. They only invested two. I thought Catboys had used um, Kitsune Rush there. No, it was the side of uh, Revenge, but, you know, coming from Revenge's backline, or the Catboys' backline. They're only going to have that Molten Core coming up from Kata Bates. We do see, does the Ryan get punished for maybe get overextending a little bit? No. Does he get the pin off the I map? Pin off the map. Uh, what a great pin by Pi. His effects can be able to get Pi back though. Yeah, Pi's just being pushed. Katie gets the hammer, the hammer kill. kill. You didn't have to do it to him. I think he had to. But I mean, we I do mean, see the them get been playing. One, they, we do see them get one tick here. They have a win condition now, but you also want to play for a little bit more than a tick and a few percent. Right. They can't. They have a win condition, but on the same coin, they can't draw anymore. You know.
I mean... Oh, a nice pick from Nelmos onto Melly there, but they do are able to get the res. Gets a little aggressive, has to back up, but I don't know if he's going to be able to touch now. Melly finds the pick onto Nelmos, and I don't know if they touch. I just has to get in there. He has to go to point, but he's not going to. He's just going to sit back here. The visor finds one, but... And once again, we see that rush comp struggling. Uh, we, we do. We do indeed. You know, I thought that's what they look the strongest on, but I don't know if that's really what's going to, you know, benefit them here. They have to switch it up. I mean, this is the, the final hour. They don't have a lot of time left. They have 42.3% to fight for on the point. If they lose one fight even, it's all over. It, it really is. So, Jerry, you're a bit of a Blizzard nerd. Can you can you you know point out some of the Easter eggs that are hidden throughout this map? Well, one of the big ones is Murloc Island. Murloc Island is an incredible place where Murlocs are free to roam and do stuff like Murloc stuff. Well, uh, uh, other things we got uh, a lot of uh, uh, World of Warcraft going into the main entrance. Flood of Duskwood. Oh uh, yeah. There's a place called Duskwood. A uh, little bit of Diablo going to third point. By a little bit, the entire third point is Diablo. Right, I mean... Second point's all StarCraft, my personal favorite, but, you know. You know, we, we, have really, we don't really know Blizzard for four main games being Overwatch, Diablo, World of Warcraft, and, and StarCraft. Right. So, you know, we're playing in Overwatch, so it makes sense that the three points are then, you know, separated into the other games. And we're going to see Taunt come out on that ball... Maybe just trying to play a little bit of early point pressure, and that's exactly what we see here. Forcing them to drop off that high ground. I don't know if Pi didn't get the call, but he's a little late. Affects it doesn't matter. They get they get a pick. Yep, Affexus finds the pick on the Grumpy Kitten, but I don't know how well I like this support line coming out from the side of Eggnog here. Lucio Zen has not been the best historically, and I don't think it's changed much in Overwatch 2. I like the Zen specifically with the ball. Discord, you know, you can pile drive the Discord targets and Really, you get pretty easy heals on the ball with the, the orb. It doesn't, you know, require you to aim and, and put a lot of pressure on you. But I'm not sure what... Yeah, I mean... Go ahead. I'm glad Pi came out on the stick here. It's already looking so much better for them. It really is. It's just... Uh, is it a matter of time before they switch support line? Or do they switch Tong first? That's what I think what it will come down to. I would like to see them switch the support line. You know, we saw the a bunch of success on this ball comp in the, in the early rounds of Li Zhang, but it wasn't necessarily with the Lucio pick. No, they had a Brig. They could even play Mercier. I mean... We do see the minefield come out from Tonk and isolate some of the people on point. Grumpy Kid with a pick onto Nelmos. Evan with a pick onto... To, oh my gosh. Effexus pops the visor, doesn't get anything. Tonk. Deathmaster just flies into the mines. Kata baits with another pick. Do they don't have any touchers? Not quite a full team one because they staggered it out long enough, but no touch, no touchers. And that just feels bad. I mean, you kind of wonder what Deathmaster was doing at the very end. They stopped pocketing uh, effects. Right. And I think they were trying to get a res, but they just tunnel visioned. So we see, um, we see Eggnog move to two and zero on this season, and Catboys drop to one and one. Yeah, I mean, kind of a big deal for them because they were not the favorites going into the match. No, we were they... expecting Catboys to just show up and dominate in a very strong fashion, but joining oh, us now is the fearless leader from Eggnog uh, Revenge. Get a beats. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Uh, probably better for you. You just beat Catboys. How are you doing? It was great. Um, we were sweating like crazy on that first map. That was one of the craziest maps we've played. Um, yeah. <laughs> just back and forth and back and forth and just 
craziness. But um, definitely on those escort maps, um, we switched to the Ramatra, and then we were, were throwing the Torb turret on off angles. And I feel like that we, we were funneling him into choke points, um, and that's what allowed us to take those two decisively. Yeah, you're really abusing Pi on the Ryan. And I don't know why he didn't get on Sigma sooner, but I mean, at the end of the day, you just kind of found their weakness and, and showed it. Yeah, the Sigma definitely looked uh, stronger. Um, we, we were having problems with that when they were starting to run it um, and slowing us down a little bit. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really the backbone of our team is just our crazy supports. Evba and Hunta are really putting in work, and then Tonk is so flexible, and then Mali is just, um, just carrying the damage as well. Yeah, talk to me more about Melly. I mean, Melly getting pocketed for most of the match just was so impactful, especially on Havana, getting pick after pick after pick on Widow. Yeah, um, it's really important. Um, we, we're just in comms, just recognizing win conditions, and then Melly getting the job done. Uh, he, he, when he gets that damage boost, it's a triple kill. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just about every fight was one off that. Yeah. Hey, we, I did some stuff. <laughs> I didn't say you didn't. You played Funny Heroes. You played the junk. You played the Torb. I mean, you put down the you put down the best player in the lobby, Torb Turret. That's that counts for something, Caden. Yeah, that it doesn't miss. So. <laughs> Overall, though, what do you think they did well as a team? Because obviously you beat them. It was pretty dominant near the end, but there are points where they looked pretty strong. I think. Just based off, of, I think we easily could have lost first map. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, I think very easily. I actually thought we kind of eked that one by. Uh, I thought we should have maybe lost that map. Um, and um, if they would have just carried that momentum, and then maybe on Havana and um, Blizzard World run a ran dive, I think would have been really nice. Just diving on, killing the turrets, killing our back line, putting some more pressure on the point. Um, if they did stuff like that and make adjustments going forward, I think they're a really strong team. They're still a really strong team. For sure. Yeah, they're definitely a team to be feared, but at the end of the day, you were just more flexible. You just eked yeah. out the win. Yeah. And as the season goes on, who knows, you know? Um, but we we're happy with our performance today. Oh, for sure. You I, should be. I have a quick question for you. You know, we just recently saw uh, the new season of, or new competitive season of Overwatch come out, and we saw a bunch of new changes come in with that. Um, I think a lot of those changes play to the strengths of your teams. You had mentioned in passing that Tonk was a ball player, so how do you think those changes are affecting you, uh, or will affect your team throughout the rest of the regular season here? I think the patches buffed our team, uh, just because... Well, Tonk one day was just like, oh, yeah, I play a ton of ball. I just dropped him. <laughs> and and then he balls meta. So he just hopped on that on the ball in Ramatra, and that's exactly what the kind of the meta is right now. So um, it definitely was a huge boost to our team, having that pocket pick as well. For sure, for sure. Always good to see. Yeah. All right, well, that's – all we got for you. Uh, All right. Pleasure talking to you. Uh, yeah. Congrats on your win. GG's, and we look forward to playing the Jamlets, I think, next week. Good luck. Okay. Yeah, thanks. See ya. Bye. Bye. And that is, unfortunately, all the time we have today. A pretty good win coming out from the side of Eggnog. Hoping to see the uh, Cat Catboys build off... Uh, Recognize their weaknesses coming in the future. Yeah, you know, for sure. The, I don't, don't know their opponent next week, but, you know, they got to go in thinking it's winnable. Don't don't dwell on the loss. Think, Focus on what you can improve on is the best advice I have for them going forward. And as far as Eggnog is concerned, continue this momentum, you know. You look to go with the ball comps, so put a little bit of time into those to really refine that, and I think you guys could really, really do well this season. No doubt about it. Um, you know, that, that's all that, like Jared said, that's all that, all the games we have scheduled for today. There is possibly one more, uh, game scheduled for week two. Um, there was some scheduling conflicts. It was not able to be played, uh, this, 
any of the time um, Thursday, Saturday, or Sunday. And unfortunately, we can't see it today, but it'll be a shame. Um, Anyways, that's all the time we have. Uh, yeah, we'll be seeing you. Yeah, we will. We'll see you in the future. Bye bye. Are you guys still streaming? Uh, JP Janet. The, the end stream button at the bottom. There's a very big end stream button at the very bottom of, of it. JP, there's an end stream button at the bottom of it.